so welcome to the main stage, everyone. We're here with Eli Carey, um, who's a longtime in IR, big LabVIEW fan, and is now taking over as the director of Software Community. And he's going to be, uh, like I said in the in the welcome session, this is the start of a listening tour, as he described it to me. So I'm going to let him take it off, give us the context, and then open his ears. Great. Um, hey, everybody. It's, it's great to be here. Great to see so many familiar faces. And I'm really excited to talk with you all and to hear your thoughts and input. Uh, I want to start by just explaining a little bit about myself. And then we'll get into the role and really the broader perspective on how NI is really shifting its perspective on how it wants to work with the community and especially people like yourself towards our, our mutual benefit. And to that end, I'll cover some of the key goals and objectives that um, myself and my new role in the company as a whole are really putting significant resource, resources and energy behind. And um, as I will probably repeat throughout the session, I really want to invite all of you to share your thoughts. Of course, there's a comment section here. We'll have some time for Q&A at the end. But I'm also very keen to speak with anyone who wants to go deep and spend more time sharing their thoughts on the things we could be doing in pursuit of some of the goals I'll outline here in a minute. So uh, to set the stage, I want to talk a little bit about myself and my experience with NI and the LabVIEW uh, community overall. I joined NI in 2006, uh, back when I still had hair. And I was quickly thrust into uh, LabU product management, I think after a tenure of a whopping like nine or 10 months, where I went on to spend basically the next 15 years of my career. And uh, of course, it's actually very rare that I get to take a photo with a customer application. Uh, most of them don't want you photographing what they do or the lab or equipment that you get to see. But I've got to see some really, really cool stuff in my career. And I think that was one of the motivating uh, things that has kept me at an eye and kept me so passionate about our technology and our products. It's really the customers and the application areas we serve. So you can see a smattering of some of the, the applications that I did get to, to photograph and work directly with. Um, some of you who, who frequented the uh, CLA summits might recognize, for example, the CERN Hadron Collider uh, was at the CLA summit in Geneva, uh, Orbital ATK, you know, NASA, NIST, et cetera. Yeah, uh, but for those that may not know, most of my time spent with customers was in what I'll call a consulting capacity around uh, LabVIEW and our software platform being used for fairly complicated applications. Uh, when I was first hired, one of the first things I was asked to do was to combat this notion that LabVIEW was just a toy and that LabVIEW shouldn't be used for any meaningful programming or development, software engineering, choose your, choose your operative word. But that was a prevailing sentiment that it was, you know, to be relegated to benches and clicking the run button and really simple application use cases. And so that that set me on a course to talk about software engineering and team based development and, and collaboration and plug in frameworks and active framework and how you qualify and, and verify the quality of your test and measurement software. Um, and uh, <laughs> now the Eiffel Tower photo, that was the CLA summit in Paris. Uh, so that's me, Stephen Mercer, and Stephen Loftus Mercer, and uh, Jeff Kodowski there. And then if Chris Ralph is on the call, I think that's the only photo I left uh, his most recent employer with. But anyway, um, the uh, the point was I spent a lot of time advocating for LabVIEW to be used in fairly complex, large scale, complex development. And I think it's it's very much no surprise to this community area here that uh, I think we've seen a lot of success and exciting deployments of LabVIEW at significant scale and that our focus shifted uh, towards really supporting those efforts. And, and when we talk about the roadmap here in a little bit, you'll see evidence that that continues to drive some of the key investments that we are working on. Um, I also got into a lot of the uh, material and content really talking about, you know, you can write spaghetti code in any language. And I think that was a common refrain that I was often pulled into, especially when meeting with LabVIEW detractors, which was often my my most enjoyable time in the field was meeting with the LabVIEW haters that were blaming LabVIEW for, for spaghetti code. And uh, as a result, we pursued uh, content and frameworks and, and messaging, uh, really talking about how LabVIEW can in fact be used for really scalable uh, large scale system development. And I think some of the frameworks that I'm seeing now, like of course DQMH and of course workers, it speaks to what is possible and the, the importance of these robust uh, frameworks and application patterns, which are very much provably 
possible and which all of you have built your careers on. I think one thing I'm keen to do is continue to champion those and support those in my current role. Uh, so one of the, well, the other things I'll make mention of speaking to my experience was, of course, there's a lot more than I plan to go into, but it's something that I think segues into where we want to take things moving forward is the role of the community and what we can do to better empower and enable the broader community. So uh, before I left the product management role in uh, 2019, whatever it was, uh, one of the, the things I worked on was the release of a community edition, a free version of, of LabVIEW for hobbyists that was compatible with some of the leading hobbyist uh, instrumentation platforms at the time. And so I think that was that was born out of an understanding that, that lowering the barriers to using our tools was important, not only for the business success of an eye on the product, but really for the broader community writ large. Uh, you guys are, are creating such incredibly valuable and compelling content. We need to grow the, the base of people that can consume, use, and build upon that to create the next generation of, of Labby users and, and to really keep the NI software platform moving forward. So we did that. It was a good first step. I think there's a lot more we can do. We already, uh, we already have some ideas and things in the work, which again, I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, but again, want to really emphasize that, that ideas from this group should be uh, a huge driving force in where we go from this point forward. Uh, now, as far as where I've been these last few years, uh, I, uh, left the product management role to go work on uh, the electric vehicle space. As you may know, NI's segmented in a few different business units. We have one focused on transportation and a, a sub-market segment focused specifically on electric vehicles. So this was an interesting experience for me because um, it, was, it was the closest I'd been to a vertical application area at this level of detail. Uh, and of course, it's taking our standard products and technology and really pursuing this high high paced market, which uh, anyone who knows me knows this is a passion of mine. So I, I love the, the EV space and the sustainability uh, of, of the pursuit of this industry at large. So uh, this was something that combined my passions around the NI platform and especially our software and the space uh, uh, itself. Uh, so I think we've done some really exciting things here, but I, I learned a few things from this. One is, is how the role of our software is evolving in such a space where you just have massive scale and the coordination of development activities and all the stakeholders that interact with the system and how you manage the lab, the production activities and all the data coming from it, I think really speaks to where our platform is evolving and growing towards serving some of these larger scale application areas. And you'll hear a lot of talk about the data and connectivity and tools like System Link, but underpinning it needs to be a software platform and technology that really lends itself to this scale of complexity. Anyway, I, uh, I came back to the software business team. Now, I think this is week, uh, week two. Week, so it's not even been two full weeks since I took on this new role. So I like what better way to start off by engaging with this group. But I was excited about some of the things that I was hearing and that we're doing in our software platform. And it's obviously something where I've spent a large part of my career and my time at NI. So uh, I was excited for the opportunity to come back and be a part of really furthering our software platform and some of the key key pursuits we have, both from a technology and from a business perspective. And so let's talk about what those are. Um, three, three pillars should come as no surprise, and I'm going to get into some of the specific tactics and example examples of where NI plans to really align ourselves to these pillars. But more importantly, it's not just about NI doing these things. It's around working with this community uh, and our overall user base to really achieve scale. So the three pillars are, we have to continue to grow the tent. We have to bring more new users uh, to our software platform and especially to LabVIEW. Uh, we have to make sure that we are really advancing the state of the art, investing in the tools, investing in the platform, investing in the product, and especially LabVIEW and that we are doing so in a scalable, sustainable way. And we'll talk about some really exciting things. Of course, you can read some of the text on this slide. Uh, I've already had numerous meetings with folks like Jim Kring to discuss some of the things that we'll, uh, we'll make mention of here in a minute. And then ultimately that we are also continuing to evolve people that would be content with spaghetti code uh, towards more scalable uh, uh, and reliable ways of, of being successful with our, our our products and especially with LabVIEW. And I think these are areas where NI recognizes we got to do more. And so we're really eager to do more. We're really eager to work with this group to achieve scale. 
I think one, one thing that I do want to explicitly say that will be fun, fundamentally different is that, at least fundamentally different from when I was previously in this role, it, I think there was a lot of like, well, NI will create content. We'll give it at forums like NI Week at the time uh, or user groups, et cetera. And uh, I think now we recognize that there is so much greater knowledge, both of the products and of the vertical domains amongst our user base and our partners and our consultants that to really achieve these goals and to do so scalably and to put the best information out there, it's so critical that we work with this group and that we tap into the knowledge set of this group. So I'm going to go through some of the, each of these pillars and kind of explain a little bit more in detail. And we're going to start with how we want to grow new users. Uh, some of these are self-explanatory, but I do want to give it the proper pomp and circumstance. So the community edition that I previously made mention of was uh, explicitly only for hobbyists and explicitly not for students. So we were actively working with our academic team to make this available for anyone in a non-professional capacity, including students. So that'll be a, a licensing change, a policy change that will uh, further lower barriers to the use of our tools and especially LabVIEW. Um, and by the way, I should mention too, we also have um, a great group of folks that are driving our academic strategy. Uh, uh, so if you know Medea or Carly Ruby, uh, the two of them are helping to lead our efforts uh, to really get back into academia, work with uh, uh, professors, and make sure that LabVIEW is prominently uh, featured in a lot of leading universities, sorry, a lot of leading universities towards, again, expanding the pipeline of new users uh, uh, coming into the LabVIEW community. So this is a key initiative for us, and I'm excited. I think as part of the listening tour, happy to introduce those folks and to make connections. If you have ideas or contacts or ways in which we could uh, strengthen those ties with academia. Uh, now, LabVIEW, of course, is very much the focus for a, a topic of discussion with this group. However, I want to be clear, my responsibilities and our focus as a company are not just about LabVIEW, it's about the overall NI platform. So as another example, uh, we are going to be releasing a version of FlexLogger known as a light edition, which will be a free version of this tool that's effectively companion software for our DAC products. So again, it's about making these, these software products more approachable, more available, easier to get started, and some of that includes lowering barriers around uh, pricing. Uh, another barrier is just simplifying the purchase experience. And I think you've seen several iterations of how we license and sell our products in recent years. Um, most of you, hopefully all of you have heard about the advent of the LabVIEW Plus suite. The fundamental goal here is to just make it simpler. Right? We have to make it simpler for the broader prospective user base as well as yourselves uh, growth within existing user bases to uh, not get caught up in the decision-making process over what tools and when you need them. So the LabVIEW Plus suite includes all of our flagship software products, products of course, LabVIEW, but as well as FlexLogger, DDM, TestN, Instrument Studio, just making it a lot simpler for our customers to get what they need. Uh, okay, so that's a quick, quick tidbit on uh, how we intend to help grow new users. Uh, I think one thing I didn't have a slide for, but I will mention before we move on, is just the importance of events. I know for a lot of my career, there was time spent pounding pavement, uh, giving seminars, giving hands-ons, uh, showing people LabVIEW. I know for me, it was very visceral, that first experience of using LabVIEW. Um, fun fact, it was, it was, of course, I graduated with a degree in computer engineering, so I understood the math and I understood a Fourier transform, but I'll never forget like turning that knob and seeing the frequency tone shift. And like for the first time that concept really connected with me and I understood it. And I think we want more of those aha moments amongst uh, prospective users of our tools. And so supporting uh, these events, doing more of them, working with our distribution channel, working with partners and people like yourselves. I think we know we need to create more content and make the demo materials more readily available. But uh, whatever ideas you have for how we can do that are warmly invited. Uh, and by the way, I, I'll say this again. Think of me as your lightning rod. You can bring me any of your ideas, concerns, feedback, criticisms. I can be your lightning rod for, for all aspects of uh, an INR software platform. Okay, so moving on to pillar number two. Uh, when I, when I uh, first discussed taking this role, I made it clear, like, I, I, I'm going to be out there evangelizing how great our tools are. It has to be the case that we're we're making meaningful improvements and in investing into these products. And I'm very 
uh, happy to tell you that this is very much going to be the case. So I think there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon, but key to guiding those efforts is the voice of this user base where it's making sure our efforts are focused on the right areas. Now, one thing that is already very much at the core of our current investments is streamlining how our products are used together. Uh, and I think there's lots of examples where if you're in a production test setting and using Labio and TestAnd, there are ways in which we know we can actively improve how those products are used together. If you're doing electromechanical tests, uh, the role of FlexSogger is, of course, uh, front and center in data logging applications and making sure that FlexSogger and many of these other tools serve as a high level starting point that makes it easy to get started, but can easily be extended, customized and added to with tools like LabVIEW is key to our success. So that's what we talk about when we mean streamlining these workflows. And we'll talk a little bit about how we're doing that. Uh, we also want to resurrect the customer advisory boards and really give our active users a, a, a bigger, better form to advocate for the things that they think are key to their success, but also to the success of the overall platform. And I will be leading that effort, which is a, a direct uh, opportunity to influence our roadmap and communicate with leaders within the R&D and, and business organization. And then we'll save the last little tidbit for here in a minute. Um, so guiding our efforts too is an understanding of how the market is evolving. And uh, this, is, this is a high level summary of that attempts to, to recognize that, of course, there are plenty of people still doing traditional tests. The acquire, analyze, present narrative that many of you remember from long ago. That's still very much at the heart of everything all of our users are doing. Because for us, it's all about interacting with real world phenomenon and getting that into a computer as quickly and as easily as possible. But increasingly, if you look at the modern test organizations, it's doing that at a massive scale. It's doing that and coordinating test activities across multiple facilities, multiple users. It's servicing such a high dynamic range of stakeholders with different expertise across these organizations, the design engineers, the data scientists, the data engineers, the lab manager, the executive stakeholders, multiple design teams, et cetera. And I'm not saying that everybody that we interact with is on that right side of the spectrum, but I am saying that this is an area where we expect to add considerably greater value with our investments moving forward. And underpinning that, of course, has to be a world-class solution towards the traditional challenges of test. It's not to suggest that those are no longer there. It's that you have to solve those well, and then you also have to be able to solve the challenges of these modern, evolving, large-scale test organizations. And so I offer this as a way to explain how we view the market and the evolution of our customers and the needs they have with our uh, our software tools. Um, and uh, this is an example of how we seek to actually understand the specific needs our customers have as they go through this progression. So there's a lot of text on here. Um, this is a framework I'm helping to develop with the team that seeks to say, okay, when we engage with our customers, uh, where are they in this natural progression? And I, I will offer, I, I hope, Tell me if you disagree, but what I had seen in my time spent at the LabVIEW community is that there was kind of a predictable progression of our users. There was the guy who like just got something quick and dirty working, and then he got more requirements and new hardware. And that, you know, simple uh, producer consumer uh, cute message handler kind of became a little bit messier, a little bit bigger. Maybe it wasn't even a pattern like that. It was just wires. And the, the challenge is if we don't, interact with these users and offer the right content to nurture them, I think we end up with things like spaghetti code, or we end up with uh, various challenges around their success uh, when achieving scale and certain levels of performance and reliability. And so what this attempts to do is provide a high level framework to, to depict how our users naturally progress in their usage of our software over time and how we should be engaging them to ensure they're successful. And I think when you get to uh, certainly more and more to the right on the spectrum, so many of the frameworks, the tools, the techniques that this group advocates for become paramount for our users to be successful. So again, this is hot off the presses, again, second week on the job, but I offer this as a way to explain, like we're trying to build some frameworks around how we talk about our software in a meaningful way so we can still have the LabVIEW is easy, it's really approachable, it's you know three icon demo on the far left, but recognize that it quickly grows in some of these larger, more sophisticated applications and intersect them with the appropriate content and with the appropriate tooling. Um, and a big part of that too are the workflows I mentioned. And so as we talk about our users and their need, 
needs and, and how they uh, interact with our software. We don't just want to look at it as like, well, what does a LabVIEW customer need? What does a FlexLogger customer need? Instrument Studio, Test Stand. But really, if I'm doing you know, electromechanical tests, I'm going to use uh, a combination of those tools and products. And before you say it, I recognize many of you here may have your own test frameworks for LabVIEW, and that's fine. Uh, but we will continue to uh, provide our own alternative to a DIY approach so that if you want an off-the-shelf framework for test sequencing or for data logging or whatever else, we have a solution. Uh, and we need to make sure that that solution is as productive as possible, which means making sure that it integrates across our platform and that tools like LabVIEW can be the most productive way in which to extend and customize it, especially when interacting with uh, the measurement data that coming from the hardware. But we're doing this with a persona-centric persona, persona approach towards really understanding the needs of our users and how they need to be able to interact with the software, especially in this modern test world. And again, this is where I welcome feedback and input from this group to make sure we're accurately reflecting the needs of the market and that the investments in these workflows are really uh, knocking it out of the park. And if they're not, I think we want to know that too. Uh, now, uh, even more broadly speaking, from a product investment standpoint, uh, we are also looking beyond just the workflows and the, the more immediate horizon of making sure these products work well together and thinking about some of these broader trends that we foresee being really relevant material to our customers and industry. And you can see a laundry list there of some, some popular buzzwords, but it's true. You saw some of the first uh, forays into uh, generative AI and large language models featured at last year's NI Connect. That continues to be an area of focus for us as well as a uh, renewed focus on things like cybersecurity and uh, networking protocols for the modern era like IPv6. Uh, and so we are, as we always have, keeping our eyes on all of these macro technology trends and working to incorporate those into our platform as part of our R&D roadmap. And you'll hear mention of some of these if you join us uh, in Austin for NI Connect this coming May, I'm gonna be here before I even know it, uh, where, you, in many ways, you might be getting a preview of some of the themes and narratives that you will see in our keynote and throughout the session. But we're going to be talking a lot about software, and we're going to be talking a lot about how these trends intersect with our products and our technology roadmaps. So uh, now, of course, I wouldn't come here without giving this group in particular a little bit more detail in terms of what exactly we are we are doing. So this is the current roadmap for the features that we have planned throughout this year and into early next year. Uh, you can see a litany of things that have recently come uh, into the product. Uh, I will highlight a few key points. Um, but uh, when talking about software engineering and, and large application development, some of the key themes that I think we've already heard in the morning sessions, which by the way, were fantastic. Uh, you can see as examples, our focus on CI and CD workflows and improving how our tools can be used in collaborative development. Something that I've spent a lot of time talking about, but we know that there's still work to be done. So even just making the, the reports that are generated by these tools more consumable and actionable is a big focus for us. Um, and so you can see mention of those. Of course, there's, there's questions or desire for more detail. Uh, I am joined by the way, by some of my colleagues, both from R&D and from marketing. Uh, in the chat. So feel free to share your thoughts or questions. Likewise, here is uh, a preview of some of the new features that we're actively working on in test end. Again, you'll see a recurring theme around continuous integration and continuous deployment workflows, as well as continuing to improve the operator interfaces and making sure we have support for the latest uh, Python virtual environments. But again, this is the current plan listening tour. I, and, and customer advisory boards, all of those intend to be vehicles by which we want to hear from you. We want to get your feedback to guide these, these efforts. Instrument Studio is a really exciting product. Uh, it is very much meant to be a launch pad, or I hear some people call it a cockpit, from which our users can quickly and easily make sure that their system set up, configured, and working properly, but then launch into workflows around electromechanical tests or embedded validation, et cetera because it is effect effectively a hub where you can quickly make sure and understand the physical phenomenon and the connectivity of your instrumentation before getting into application development, or rather to actually complement your application development. So useful bo both from an out of the box standpoint, as well as from a uh, debugging and just getting data and insight super quickly. Uh, FlexLogger, of course, is our uh, out of the box data logger. 
you can see investment there too. I mentioned earlier, making sure it's it's uh, available as companion software for our DAC products, uh, making the integration with Testan for sequencing easier and more natively integrated uh, to the point also about facilitating these integrated workflow between our products. Uh, again, just wanted to give you a preview of some of the new features. We'll aim to have various forums at NI Connect where you can dive deep with the teams. If there are questions or desire to have more information, again, I welcome you to, to put your comments in the in the chat or we can try to save time at the end for uh, any Q&A. Uh, and then System Link. Of course, you'll continue to hear us talk a lot about System Link and uh, the role it has in connecting our systems. I will offer in my time in the EV world, I think especially because we were dealing with such large labs, this was such a, uh, a compelling aspect of our software tools was the ability to connect all these test systems because increasingly it's not just about data from any one test it's about the overall efficiency and operation of all the test activities and the correlation aggregation of data from across multiple labs with disparate data infrastructure and also being able to service a wide variety of stakeholders across a large organization so i think System like continues to be uh, a big focus area for us. And so you'll continue to hear a lot of talk about the roadmap and investment into our lab management software and system link as the backend technology. All right. So I'm sure you read it on the title slide. Uh, so I will explain what we were talking about here for anyone who hasn't seen it. Jim uh, posted a, uh, an idea to the idea exchange to more seriously explore what it would look like to make LabVIEW open source. And this was actually something that was specifically discussed with me when I was entertaining this role was the importance of actually building this out and making this real. And so I think this is something that NI leadership is genuinely excited to explore and that I'm gonna be leading the charge on in terms of facilitating this collaboration with this group. Uh, so the, 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 the idea is to take something that's fairly atomic, that's already out there. Many of you are already aware that the icon editor source code is freely available from our discussion forums and making it open source, putting it on GitHub uh, with the intent of really seeing how and where the community can contribute and improve the quality of this code. And so we're still working through some of the, the last mile details on making this happen. So I, all disclaimers apply again, second week. But I want to emphasize, this is something that not just myself or even the immediate leadership team are excited about. It's all the way up to uh, the president of uh, NI are aware of this effort. And I think back the idea that this seems like an obvious way in which we can work directly with the community to ultimately have a better software platform. And so when we do this, uh, we will talk about it with this group and make sure you guys are aware of it. But it's really important that we use this as a vehicle to understand what this collaboration looks like, right? How much activity is there? What is the quality of the pull requests? Uh, can we pull it back into standard products? So phase one is to make uh, IP like this available. Again, I think the logical starting point per Jim's suggestion is the icon editor. By the way, as part of the listening tour, if there are other aspects of the product that you think would make sense, please do let us know. Please do let me know. Um, it's nice to start with G code. Because for one thing, obviously this group is very familiar with G-Code. For another, it's easier to build and debug it and make sure it works uh, without needing our internal build infrastructure. And so just to be clear, I think anything that gets into non-G-Code becomes a lot more difficult for us to open source. Not to say we won't ever do it, more to say this is where we're going to start. And if there are other aspects of the product uh, that are written in G that you think could also serve as test beds to really understand what this relationship looks like moving forward. Again, listening to it, please do let me know. Um, but I, I see a lot of chats coming in. I'm not able to keep up with them. I do plan to go back, but please do share your thoughts and hopefully your excitement with what it would look like to actually make this happen for the icon editor, but also other key aspects of LabVIEW and our software platform. Okay. Uh, of course, when it comes to our roadmap and improving the product, you heard mention of some of our uh, explorations of generative AI at the last and I connect. I think we are continuing to explore and research what this would look like. Uh, many of you know Eric Reffitt, who is in the chat. Uh, he is leading these efforts, and this is a great example of incorporation of, I think, a, a, a clear trend in ind industry. Uh, into our software roadmap and as a part of our listening tour and our customer advisory boards, we're really excited to hear what you all think and where and how you think this can complement 
workflows uh, that would make you more productive and make our products even more compelling. Okay, so that brings me to the third and final, final the third and final pillar of our plan for how we intend to engage the community. And really, this is built around the success of our customers, making sure they're they're proficient and capable. Again, avoiding those spaghetti diagrams. And uh, one thing I go straight to our user groups. I think we have historically spent a lot of time at these accounts helping to talk about these best practices. Many of you probably participate in a user group, either at your place of business or maybe in your geography. I think we want to light the fire under user groups. But to do that, we need people that will steward them and we need good content. And so I am working with the team to build effectively a resource kit for how we can really jumpstart the creation of user groups. We have a lot of accounts where they have a lot of active lab users and they care a lot about making sure they're able to bring in that next generation of users, that they're able to talk intelligently about when to use LabVIEW versus alternative tools like Python. And so one of the immediate activities is to empower them, to empower our advocates, especially within some of these large accounts, uh, to talk about best practices and software engineering and team-based development and just LabVIEW style guidelines, et cetera. Um, but uh, I, I do wanna make an open invitation to this group. I think how we can, uh, the, the tips, the ideas that this group has from your own experience doing that is, is a critical input to us. And I do want to acknowledge, this is something that I think we've made some significant progress on in recent years. Um, people like Nancy in particular have been at the helm of our efforts to improve our content and to better engage with the community. Uh, and I want to invite Nancy to talk a little bit about some of her efforts uh, uh, that she has previously led and that she continues to lead in her new role. And so, Nancy, if you're on and able to hear me, I would love for you to speak briefly to some of the work that you're doing and how that intersects with our goals around uh, making our user base more successful and more proficient. I think I'm here now. Yep, we can hear you. Awesome. Can you hear us? Okay, there we go. I might have some echo here, but hopefully you guys hear me. Um, Eli, you, okay, and hopefully no echo. Um, just, I want to share with everybody, and Eli, thank you for inviting me on. So I am, I am so thankful. This will be the house back up. All right. So, Eli, you are absolutely the perfect person in at this point in time. I'm absolutely thrilled. What you guys have seen is a little bit of Eli's history. And what was really fun that I saw on LinkedIn recently was Chris Rell's post on LinkedIn where Chris said that Eli was my predecessor. It's great to have you back on again. One of the things um, that I think is going to be fantastic community is the fact that the NI really has changed their focus. I saw this slowly happen when I was at a developer relations and it really started to work in the fall time frame. And so everybody was in the call, this is legit um, what Eli is talking about here and the enthusiasm that's going all the way through um, president of National Instruments or of NI. Um, I want to thank the community in particular that I came on in the fall of 22 and had most of uh, 23 as part of the community. You guys ranked on um, We had an additional GDF in Sydney, Australia, which was fantastic. Uh, there was so much energy, new ideas, new faces at the event, and you guys made that thing fun. We ranked on your user groups again, and we were really thankful to have the uh, uh, programming essentials track at NI Connect. Uh, last year and go again um, this year. So it was a joy to be part of this group as a member of NI and uh, help you guys turn and and really give uh, a great starting point um, as he's rolling into this role and can be fantastic with his boldness. Um, I've had a fantastic sabbatical and I'm kind of uh, back in the swing of things again, hopefully stay in the NM market. I'm um, thankful to be uh, part of the Lab Champions. But what I want to really highlight, um, Captain Eli, what you said, that is a collaboration with the 
community. So first of all, you guys have seen the new website for G Central. Um, I'm a member of the board of G Central, and it's fun to see the amazing talent of the team and what they've been doing as it relates to um, kind of revamping the mission statement. Since we're in a, a place of change and revamping the mission statement, the website is fantastic, and it's designed for community make contributions. Then in the middle here, the community training initiative shows lots and Palmerito and out uh, coming up with a fantastic platform as well. Uh, um, let me cut my camera here. Maybe I guess I'm breaking up is what I'm hearing. So anyhow, um, the uh, platform is fantastic um, so that anyone can learn about you anywhere. And you will start seeing videos in LinkedIn. I think it's going to be great. Uh, Eli working with you both for the community training initiative and be central. Apologies if the audio and video is getting up is what I'm hearing. Ironically the video is great. This is the audio, but um, I think I think most of it is is coming through. I mean I think Nancy's done some excellent work and just to make sure I think we hit some of the key points, right? She's she's on a leadership team with G Central. Um, she's an, a, a, obviously been a champion since 2008. Uh, uh, and uh, is leading our community training initiative. So I think all these exemplify uh, how we need to work with the community to really achieve our goals around proficiency and um, really understanding how to leverage. And this is key. I really want to emphasize this point. I think I, I listened to the, the all of you in the sessions, not just at the GLA summit, but I remember it from my, my prior life in this role um, at the CLA summits and at and I connect. And I think it's just, it's always been amazing, both the level of passion and excitement and knowledge that this group possesses. And so now as I come into this new role and I think about the things that I need to achieve, and in particular, the success of our user base and then growing the pipeline of users, I'm only going to be successful if I'm able to tap into and leverage this community. And I just, I'm so grateful uh, for the level of excitement and engagement that I think we see. And I think NI recognizes that we can do a better job of partnering with you all to really take advantage of that and amplify your voices. How we do that, how we work with you, I think we're still working through that. And I, I really want this group to help guide those efforts and to, to tell me what you need from me to really, and, and on behalf of NI, not just me personally, but uh, on behalf of NI to really make sure that you're successful and that your ideas and your knowledge are really amplified for the betterment of the overall software community. So, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, but even just going back to the engagement uh, or the, the, the software progression, again, a lot of words, uh, point is like, it's a framework, but the point is like, there is a progression to our, how our customers interact with our software. Uh, and just knowing how to engage our customers, engage our, our users towards putting the right content in front of them at the right time, towards nurturing them both nurturing brand new users and getting that, you know, 10 year user to that next level in terms of their success and, and knowledge set. And I think that's where understanding how to work with you all, how to incorporate the content that you have, uh, the ideas, the groups that you've created on G Central and Lava G and elsewhere is really key. And of course, and I connect and other forums like that continue to be vehicles for uh, getting your voice out there but I'm open to other ideas. We want to put together effectively kits for our users to create user groups and to talk about LabVIEW intelligently within their accounts, how we can do that while leveraging your knowledge, but also giving you, you incentive and, and uh, value for playing a role in that. I think it's something I'm really keen to understand. Anyway, so that concludes all of the content that I had prepared for this keynote. Uh, you know, again, second week, but really, great chance to really hit the ground running and uh, meet with this group and share some of my, my early plans around what a collaboration with the community looks like from this point forward. Uh, for anyone, the reason I chose that photo is because of you, Chris Ralph, if you're listening. So just know that, um, thanks for the shout out. But um, I also want to, in addition to Q and A and, and, and comments in the chat here, Feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to schedule time to, to chat, hear your thoughts, get your ideas, et cetera. Uh, I do hope to organize various events and forums at NI Connect where we can meet in person and discuss these ideas further. But with that, in the time that we have left, uh, 
I guess if anyone can help facilitate, are, were there any key questions that came up or topics or ideas that people want to hop on a mic and share? I'm happy to see that there has been a lot of activity. Uh, I don't claim that I've been able to keep pace with it though. Let's see here. What has been the role Emerson plays in that research? Oh, okay, that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, okay, so what is, obviously NI has been acquired by Emerson. Um, and so I think the fundamental question is, what does that mean for the future of NI uh, and especially LabVIEW? And I think the bottom line is you should all feel very positive about it. They acquired us because they saw us as a differentiated vendor of test and measurement equipment. Like they didn't, there are a lot of companies out there that make DMMs and scopes and even modular instrumentation, but they saw that we had some unique value in the market and that it was really built around our software. And so um, while I am not personally in direct discussions with Emerson, I've, I've, my, my leadership team is, and I can tell you that there's been a renewed focus on really making sure we have, uh, we, we capitalize on what has historically made NI uh, great and software and especially LabVIEW are at the heart of that. Eric, I see you join. You had thoughts as well? Um, it wasn't about this topic. I was simply going to help you like with, find the topics that people were talking about. Um, is there any focus going on? Oh, no, go ahead. I was gonna, I was going to have you address the one that Sam and some of them were talking about in terms of like uh, a repository for presentations to be like what Darren has set up. Yes, I know that was something that was on your list, and you did, but you didn't get a chance to talk about it in here. Yeah, that's that. So, thank you, Eric, because that is something that right out of the gate, it's clear we need to go back, update some of our content. You know, I first first customer meeting I jumped into was, hey, can I do team based development with Labby? How do I do diff and merge? And so I think we have that content. But one of the things that I'm personally wrestling with is what's the best place for it to live in this modern era? Um, and to my point too, around collaboration with this group, uh, part of me just wants to put the content on GitHub so that we can collaborate as a community on making sure that the best practices uh, exist. But of course, there's also G Central and Lava G, and there's the you know, discussion forums. So even just thoughts on what is the best repository in which to store some of this content that we want to point people to uh, is one of my one question I would love for this group to weigh in on. That's what you're referring to, right, Eric? Yep, you got it. Um, Eli, because you brought it up why from the open know. source, people had uh, questions about uh, what else and I might be interested in open sourcing if you wanted to hit on any part of that topic? Yeah, I think we we are, are looking at criteria less so like named pieces of IP. It's it's at least for this initial phase, ideally it's G code. Ideally it's, some, ideally it's something that can be built and tested independent of perhaps the products it's used in, Icon Ever being one of those. Um, and if it's already out there, as many aspects of the G code base of LabVIEW are, I think that makes it pretty easy for us to, to put it in the GitHub repository. So I think that's where we want to start. If you get into things like, I want to open source the LabVIEW runtime, uh, putting the business issues aside, I think there's a technical complexity that would make it very expensive on our side. And so I think we want to start, you know, as, as Dr. T used to say, the OOCH approach. I think we want to look at very immediate, short-term wins where we can demonstrate success and then grow from there. So think about, I, I welcome ideas, but use that as your criteria for the suggestions that you might put forward. Uh, Q, I see your suggestion about why not G-Central. I had that same thought. The only question I had is if we actually want collaborative development on some of the IP, should G-Central be the face of content that is ultimately maintained and iterated on at GitHub? Uh, and is that something that we have a precedent for elsewhere? So. I think LabVIEW is weak in CI/CD. It should be a one-liner to get a Docker container with any version of LabVIEW installed to compile now. Yep, I think we're, we're making some improvements to CI/CD, but we know our work is not done. So, agreed. I'll, I'll also jump okay. in on that one because uh, the, the point around, like Docker as an example, I don't love as the best example for LabVIEW 
I, I understand it from a fully automated headless environment. It actually works fine. But just keep in mind that Docker and a GUI presentation, like LabVIEW as a graphical language, and Docker talking to any amount of hardware or peripherals, those things don't get along. Imaging software, like VMware and other things like that, uh, is a better alternative, but I understand I understand the different needs ar around um, Docker workflows. Uh, Sam Taggart has been a huge proponent, talked my ear off for a long time uh, about the needs for being able to automate that for builds and testing and things that don't require UI. So uh, we, we fully understand um, that portion. I like your idea, Derek, on looking at the uh, hobbyist toolkit. I assume you're talking about the IP to talk to the Arduino and BeagleBone. That's, that's a I'd be shocked if that IP wasn't already out there. So yeah, great example. Steve, give me lots of dependency free ways to talk to everything and open source them. MongoDB, TCP, industrial ethernet comms. Uh, this is in the spirit of adding to the list of things to potentially open source. Yeah, so uh, somebody brought up the comment about you can open source and not accept push requests uh, or pull requests. Um, so, I think this is something we're very much approaching in increments, make, you know, have the official NI GitHub repository, and then see what level of contribution uh, we get and the quality of that code. And um, I, I actually am very optimistic that I think based on what I know of this group and their, their prowess, we'll see some very high quality contributions. But uh, from a, uh, from an NI perspective, we want to, we want to look at that first and then make an assessment about how, practical it is to pull it back into standard product, but that is the goal. What about open source and toolkits no longer support but still sell? Um, I think that's potentially on the list. I think if we still sell them, that would suggest we still support them. But I think there, I understand the spirit of your point. There are toolkits that we have not uh, released updates for in recent years, and we would rather I think that's worth exploring. So there a lot of talk about open source. Um, uh, as a reminder too, that was one of uh, a couple different pillars. The other ones being new users, engagement with academia, the advent of the community version. I saw some comments earlier around uh, updates to the hobbyist uh, IP. I think we need to explore that. Um, when it comes to user groups and the content for those user groups, again, the group, the ask for this group is what ideas do you have for best practices that we can share broadly and say, these are the best practices for organizing a user group, getting attendance, uh, maybe a progression of topics, uh, uh, incentivizing people to come, et cetera. But then also to the point of the value of the content this group creates and that this group presents, how can we leverage that? How can we make it valuable for you to make your content, your ideas, your demos, your software, something that we can then empower other people to talk about, be it account user groups or regional user groups, et cetera. Because again, we wanna, we wanna elevate the overall LabVIEW user community. I think making your ideas more broadly known would do that, but I understand that you do that for the sake of, um, we need to make sure the incentives are aligned. So ideas on how to structure that, I think are welcome too. Open source LabVIEW training modules crosses all three pillars. It's not a bad idea. Uh, Eric, there's a question in the chat. Do you see any changes to the certification program? I'm not aware of any pending changes, but you're probably more polite on that than I am. Uh, I I wish that that were a true statement, Eli, but my understanding is the same as yours right now. There there are I don't know of any changes being planned. Okay. The issue of user groups is that they are usually small, and most of the content made available stays invisible to the rest of the world. Exactly. Now I've been to some user groups that are awesome. Right, like it, it just depends, and I'm not just talking about like you know the the Bay Area user group. Um, I've been to accounts where you have, you know, 
people pounding the table and talking about these really uh, phenomenal best practices. In fact, some of the most successful accounts we have are ones where you have kind of a, a pocket of folks that almost serve like a, a uh, systems integrator of sorts, but within the company and they're a service organization, right? You got a team of like three or five people maintaining a test framework that's used company-wide. And so those individuals, I often see, you know, the only way they get adoption and that broad successful usage is if they're disseminating best practices and documentation. And so I do see user groups successfully run around that type of organizational structure. But I think we want more of those. And part of it is equipping them with the tools, the content, the resources with which to organize and facilitate those events. Sometimes it seems the best practice advice is how the data does not scale. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I personally wrote a lot of best practice content many, many years ago. I know most of it is probably out of date or at least it's still blue. Um, and so while we could throw a bunch of our own resources at just going to go update it, again, I know this group has much more updated, more relevant content. So I go back to how do we tap into that? How do we leverage that? Do we just put the best practice content on GitHub and invite the community to participate in the spirit of open source, but in this case, it's open source content. Hey, Chris, love your wiki calendar. I see a technical question around the advent of .NET 8 on the roadmap. Will this include uh, cross-platform support on Linux, being able to call .NET cross-platform? Good question. I think we'll have to follow up on some of these. Question about the merits of the certification standards. I think, you know, one of the reasons the certification standards exist is that I'll, pretty much anybody can put LabVIEW on a resume. Um, and it may be in fact that that person hit the run button once in college and now they say they know LabVIEW. <clears throat> and so the, the, a lot of organizations use those certifications to discern how, where in the organizational structure makes sense to insert this person. To my earlier point about that centralized, you know, center of excellence or test organization, Ideally, you're at least hiring for CLD or CLA level knowledge. Um, and there are certainly organizations where they have such large scale test infrastructure built with LabVIEW that they are specifically hiring for those certification levels. But it just depends. Um, there are also organizations where they are resolved to teach those best practices after hiring somebody they, they, they identify as just a smart engineer. So it kind of depends, but fundamentally it's a way to raise your, raise your name above the noise. Repost, could you and the team broaden the LabVIEW communications to cover building desktop applications as it is not only for hardware integration, it is the best in class for that, but it is really good for desktop as well. Yeah, you know, this has been a recurring point of discussion since I began my career with the, the LabVIEW community. Um, there are many of you that actively use LabVIEW for applications outside of the test and measurement domain, and that's fine. Um, I think from NI, you should expect that we, we are a test and measurement company and you will continue to see us talk about our tools and especially LabVIEW in the context of test and measurement and making sure it's world-class at interfacing with hardware and instrumentation. Now, it so happens that automating the interface with instrumentation often gets into a lot of standard application software best practices and user workflows, et cetera. But as a company, that is the role LabVIEW serves for us is in facilitating world-class test and measurement systems and making our users wildly productive. I think the, I, I point to the open source uh, idea initiative as a vehicle in which over time, um, you know, we want to unblock you all from furthering the state of the art and advancing the state of the art with LabVIEW for whatever your intended use cases are. Uh, but I think you will always hear us discuss LabVIEW as a programming language, as a development environment that is specific to usage within the test and measurement space. Hey, uh, Eli, uh, I dropped in there something that the th this whole topic was one that the champions talked about at a recent meeting and Q had had posted in there, um, like kind of the framing uh, that they had come up with. And it I think it aligns well with kind of what you were talking about, right? Lab user programming, language. we're always going to call it a programming language. Um, and the part that the uh, champions kind of helped us wordsmith on was they can be used for anything it's particularly well suited for test and measurement, right? So it's trying to acknowledge the 
it's a programming language and as a programming language, you can use it to l do literally anything that you want. Um, we designed it and when NI talks about it, we're gonna be talking about it in the test measurement sense uh, yep. most of the time. Uh, but that's trying to acknowledge the, 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 the nature of the fact that it is a programming language and as such, you can use it to do just about anything. And people do. Yep, well said. So I know we're down to our last minute. So I just want to thank you all for having me express again that I'm really excited to be uh, back working with this group. Again, I think I'm, I'm really motivated by the level of excitement and engagement I see amongst the overall community. And um, I really am trying to listen, gather perspective. Uh, feel free to call me out if you think I'm being too obtuse at any point in time, but please do reach out connect with me and hopefully I will see most of this group at NI Connect. And Eli, just to, as a kind of a closing thing for anybody who's interested in standing up user groups or you have challenges with your user groups, there's, there were several comments in here of people trying to reach out and find other people. Eli is, is your go-to person for NI to contact and will help you work with, within both NI and with our distributors and other partners uh, to kind of build up a, your engagement. So I think that that's a challenge that we can acknowledge and we want to help. Yep, I can be your lightning rod. All right, I'll see you all soon.